Hi, today we're back with the Metcal GT120 soldering station just to finish off a few items that we didn't cover before. So first of all, I had a few questions about the handpiece. Um, this is actually an aluminium handpiece. I think you can see the machining marks there, but it's painted or anodized black aluminium. And if I peel back the silicone sleeve slightly, this is a removable sleeve that you can replace. You can see that is metal underneath. So it does feel like a nice high quality part and certainly not a step back from the advanced handpiece on the Metcal MX5200 station. So really nice piece of equipment here and it does feel very comfortable to hold. However, one criticism I had is that the distance here is quite long when you're using it with this heater plus tip combination. And actually it does become a little bit difficult to use when you're so used to having something where the tip is significantly closer to where you hold the iron. So I managed to get hold of some of these integrated heater tips. So this has got the heater, the temperature sensor, and the tip all integrated, which should give us significantly better performance. But also I want to see whether that actually changes the distance here, uh, because this looks to be a little bit more compact than the two um, separate heater and tip combinations. And yeah, so comparing the cartridge with the heater plus tip, you can see we're shaving off about 18 millimeters from that length. So that should improve things quite considerably. Now, when you want to use the handpiece with the integrated cartridge, um, it comes with an alternative little collet that we put in here. And we just screw this into the end. This doesn't actually hold anything in now when you're using it with the integrated cartridge. So at this point, you can just slide this in exactly as you would do with the original Metcal station. So you can just change these tips without faffing around with this collet. And you can see now the distance is much more respectable and probably going to be a lot better to solder with. Now on the 2P coin test, I think I did upset a few owners of JBC stations. Um, so I've gone out and bought another tip for it. I was using a genuine JBC tip previously, uh, but it was a little bit smaller than the Metcal tip. Um, so I've gone ahead and bought this one. This is exactly the same size as the tip that I'm using in the MX5200, so 4.8 millimeters, and similarly, uh, same on the GT120. I think this is uh, this might be a five millimeter tip rather than 4.8, but it's not really going to make any difference there. Now onto the soldering station. I am still using the Best or Jabe soldering station, but I can guarantee you that that makes absolutely no difference to the soldering quality. All of the functionality really is based on these heat cartridges and I have measured the output from those Jabe soldering stations and they do output the full. Uh, I think it's up to 130 watts into one of these cartridges so it is the real deal and it will make no difference. However, I am going to be getting hold of a JBC station soon so we'll be able to have the real deal in the lab and do a comparative test then. And now if we take a look at the hand pieces, we're in a much better situation with this fully integrated cartridge. Not only should it give us better thermal performance, but now the distance is basically the same as on the JBC. Not quite as good as the MX5200 standard hand piece, and obviously the ultrafine hand piece has an even smaller distance, which makes this one amazing for really delicate work. Now, in terms of um, the temperature of the handle, I've used this GT120 station quite considerably this week and I've not really noticed any heating of the handle. Uh, similarly with the Metcal MX5200 hand pieces, these don't seem to get warm at all. But the JBC that I use at work and this Jabe slash Best station that I've got here, I do find this metal collar gets quite warm and if you're doing prolonged soldering, it does uh, get to the point where you you decide that you need to have a rest from soldering because this is getting really quite hot. Um, obviously, if you're doing the occasional soldering and keeping it in the cradle for quite a long time, then it cools down, it never really gets that warm. But when you're doing some intense soldering uh, with very little break between each solder joint, then after a few minutes, this starts to get a little bit hotter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I get the genuine JBC station in the lab, and then we'll do a thermal camera test and just have a look at what these hand pieces look like. Uh, when they're heated up for a prolonged period of time. Now there was a question about the MX5200 station and similar stations that use the RF heating technology. Now with a standard soldering station 
Um, you either have a resistive heating element or an inductive, like in the GT120. And someone rightly pointed out, inside the soldering station, those large inductors were part of the LC tank circuit to do the inductive heating. It's not just a simple resistive heater. But inside here is a temperature sensor, and that is connected to the microcontroller in the soldering station. And basically, it sees a change in temperature, and then it feeds back and adjusts the heater current. Now, in the smart heat technology, it's quite a different situation going on. Basically, in the station, we've got a signal generator at 13.56 megahertz. We've got an RF power amplifier and some matching. Uh, but there's no temperature sensor integrated into this tip. Um, the tip is designed in such a way that it uses the Curie point of the metal inside it. And basically, that soldering station is always ready to give up to its maximum rating in power into the heating element inside here. And it's inherent in the tip that basically as the temperature drops, it's able to absorb more power from the soldering station. So there's not the same PID type control loop trying to adjust the temperature. It's inherent to this heating element and tip and everything inside it. So really quite a clever system. Uh, quite difficult to explain, but if you wanted to have a look, I think they've got some decent white, pa white papers on their website. So we're now going to redo the 2P coin test. Hopefully everything is a lot fairer between all of these stations now. Uh, we're going to use some 6040 solder, 1.2 millimetres. I've measured 100 millimetres and we're going to feed in exactly the same amount for each test. And basically I'm going to try and feed it in as fast as possible. And when we get to this point here, just remove the solder keep the soldering iron on here and then just see how the solder flows onto the coin. I'm also cleaning up every coin um, and also cleaning it with some flux clean as well to make sure that there's no other contaminants on each coin so they're all nice and shiny uh, and just before I do the test I'm going to clean each one up. And so some very different results this time compared to the previous testing. Those new tips really make a huge difference to the thermal performance. Uh, we've got the GT120 here and that was flowing solder the moment that it was touched onto the coin. Uh, really responsive with that new soldering tip. And I did buy a 1mm tip as well so we're going to do some general purpose soldering and some upcoming videos with that. But now I'm expecting very good results from that soldering station. The JBC style station with the new tip also delivered excellent results, pretty much on a par with the new GT120. It's rated for 10 watts more, but really I'm seeing very, very similar results between the two. Now, obviously, the Metcal MX5200 is just a completely different beast to these, and you'd expect that. It's probably about double the price, very different heating technology, and it is known for its thermal performance. So I wouldn't get too upset by the fact that uh, this one is outperforming in terms of thermal response. It's just designed for that purpose. And then I did add in the KSGER station at the request of one of my subscribers. Uh, didn't flow quite so well. I think it's rated for 72 watts, 72 watts I think, and then 120 watts peak. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but certainly it wasn't able to quite pump in as much energy as uh, the rest of the stations there. So yeah, I'm much happier with the GT120 station now and the performance seems to be significantly better than this arrangement with the heater and the little tips. I did also manage to get a 1mm chisel tip uh, which is more along the lines of what I tend to use for general purpose soldering so now this should be much more enjoyable to do some soldering with. I have to say, I really was a little bit disappointed after the video that I did last time with this arrangement. It just doesn't seem to work very well. I can understand why they've done it because it means that you can get a variety of different tips for a relatively low price but the performance just isn't there. It doesn't really make sense to use that heater plus tip combination when these fully integrated solutions are available. The only problem at the moment is there seems to be very limited stock from all the suppliers. I had to buy these from Mauser and they only had a few different types in stock. Luckily they had the 1mm chisel and the 5mm chisel so I was able to use those. Uh, but at the moment, it just seems like, like stock 
is in short supply and that seems to be across the industry. I am looking to try and get hold of a JBT station but the one that I'm after isn't available at the moment either so there's going to be a little bit of a wait before I can get that in the lab. I do think the Metcal GT120 is a little bit overpriced in that segment because there's a lot of competitive units. Uh, we've obviously got the JBC, we've got the Pace station and also the Ursa stations which are very similarly priced uh, somewhere between 300 and 500 pounds and it's a very competitive market and I think possibly they've just priced it very slightly too high. You might be able to get a good deal on it in the future when the price drops a little bit. It's still new to the market uh, but in the instance where you've got all of these options available it might be that the GT120 is just a little bit too expensive. I am hoping also to get hold of the Pace and one of the Ursa Icon stations as well so we can take a look at those. And also through the post I've just received a quick soldering station as well so we'll see how that behaves in the coming weeks. So hopefully you found this video useful. Any thoughts or comments don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. Big thank you to JLC PCB who are my video sponsor. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some low-cost PCBs made. But until next time, thanks for watching.